everyone. My name is Nicole Yoder, the Vice President for Aid and Aliyah at the International Christian Embassy. Today, we're on a very special webinar, the Hezbollah Threat Security Chiefs Speak. It's my privilege as a representative of the aid work of the Christian Embassy to meet many, many people throughout the land of Israel in the course of our aid work. And uh, today, I'm going to have the opportunity to share the opportunity with you to meet some of our Israeli friends and to learn from them. And it's a very interesting topic we have. Generally, we hear about the southern border of Israel. And uh, obviously in May, there was uh, another uh, escalation and war along the southern border. And however, I've come to understand and learn through tours we've taken along the northern border that actually the northern border is an even greater threat, though it's been quieter in recent years than the southern border of Israel. And today we have the opportunity to hear from some of the security chiefs along the northern border who have the responsibility of protecting the citizens in their communities. And today um, I have the honor of having with me several friends, Itai Carmon, who's the security chief for the regional council of Zvulun. And we have with us uh, Dani Tal, the security chief for the Rosh Pina municipality and Nurit Bar, who will be translating uh, for him questions that they reviewed ahead of time. And, and she is the spokeswoman for the security department in Rosh Pina. And again, we have with us our dear friend, uh, Shmuel Bowman, our partner in the uh, life uh, from the, and the CEO of Life Shield. And he is our partner with the uh, uh, shelters project where We've had the absolute honor and privilege of bringing 138 shelters to communities, uh, vulnerable communities along the Southern and the Northern border. And we will continue that work, but we wanna share with you today uh, a little bit about what is actually uh, the situation in the North. We've also, as you saw in the video, had the opportunity to bring other kinds of equipment like the firefighting equipment due to the incendiary balloons and whatnot. And today we're going to um, shift our focus from what happened in the South to the threat in the North. Maybe before I uh, start asking some questions from our friends, I could have just have you look at a few maps just to orient yourself. Some of you may not be aware of, or of the, the way uh, Israel is positioned in the Middle East. So if I could have the first map put up, just to quickly show you the size of Israel uh, there to in the, in the middle left of the screen, I guess. And right above it, you have Lebanon and Syria and Jordan surrounding and Egypt below. Um, when we talk about the Northern border, that's the border with Lebanon and Syria. And then one other map I'd like to show before we start uh, talking with our friends is the map of inside Northern Israel. So I can show you where our friends are coming from and you get a sense of where they're actually located in Israel. If I could see the second map up. Um, but first I'd like to ask um, our friends, maybe we can start with Itai, if you could tell us a little bit about your region and, and where you're located and what's around you, who's located in your area as far as the communities there and so that we can get a sense of, of the Zvulun Regional Council. I understand it's where the biblical Zvulun, uh, the tribe of Zvulun was located. And so you've, you've returned to that region, it's the same er area. Yes. yes, you're right. The Zvulun, it's one of the, from the Bible, uh, where was uh, Bnei Israel been in the, in the past. And the, our community, we live near a port of Haifa, near a high, city of Haifa, near the Krayot, it's called. Uh, but the mo most important, we are uh, near to the oil uh, factories and the, the port of Haifa. So it's a very, uh, a very uh, important, uh, important uh, factories that's all the electric uh, for Israel or gasoline, everything is near to us. We are a agriculture uh, community. 
14, uh, 14 uh, villages, kibbutzim, and uh, small villages, and uh, a lot of uh, kids, and uh, also maybe we have a, one big factory that's maybe uh, the friends of in the world know him. It's called the Parram. It's do the all the all the uh, PVC uh, uh, roofs, plastic roofs in the pergola or in the roofs in the in the world. Uh, but uh, the most important we are uh, agriculture. Uh, 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 the agriculture, and we have a lot of uh, uh, very young and very old people here. And because we are very uh, uh, vatik, uh, older population, older uh, popular, that's why uh, uh, part of our villages in uh, they have uh, 100 years in the guard. So uh, we don't have a lot of uh, shelters and we are uh, farmers. So we are a uh, peace people. And uh, we are not uh, the far, we are far away from the North uh, border. It's 40 kilometer, but it's not matter because we have, if we need, we have only one minute to go to the shelter. So it's a very problem for uh, old people and young people uh, to do it when we have the alarm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're near near one of the bigger cities in the north, which has some of the key uh, strategic uh, sites that would be a would be a target. Okay, um, maybe we could hear from Roche Pina, from Nurit and Dani. Can you share with us a little bit about your region and its proximity to the border? It's... We need to unmute them. Yeah, for a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, we founded at uh, 1882, mm -hmm. and uh, we are on the valley in between the Golan Heights and the mount, the, the hills of Knaan. Mm -hmm. We are uh, detached to Tzfat, which is a, quite a big village and uh, a city, sorry. And we have Kirat Muna, which is uh, around the uh, um, I think uh, 15 kilometers from us. Uh, we have a small airport here, which are uh, very interesting to the Hezbollah to target. We have several uh, uh, army base, which uh, are surrounding us. One is, is the main uh, uh, base of the north. Mm -hmm. which are uh, during the war, we filled it very well because they were trying to target them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are also uh, have a mixture uh, public uh, uh, citizens because we are a very old village. Mm -hmm. This is four generation living uh, one next to the other, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we have around uh, 3,000 800 people, which 400 of them are like a newcomer to the village. But uh, if you want percentage, uh, we have around 20% which are really over 60 years old. Mm -hmm. And the rest are uh, uh, babies, which are up to, uh, we have 40% of this amount, uh, they are uh, babies and, uh, and young. Mm -hmm. The rest are the middle age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, there is a, a lot of reason to the Hezbollah why to try to attack us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could share with us uh, a little bit about um, the strength of Hezbollah and what you're actually planning for in terms of a threat of a, for, on your community. I understand with the air force uh, close by and whatnot, you, you're also a target as Itai is for a different reason, but what is the, the security department in Rosh Pina planning um, might happen in the next war? Uh, we have a problem here in the area because uh, um, as you know, the, the rules of building a new houses have a, a rule to build one room which are like a shelter. 
but we have 20% of the people which are old because they, they built the houses uh, before, just when they started the village. This is around 200 uh, houses which are without any possibility of security. Oh. And uh, with a half a minute running to the public shelter, it's a very, very difficult uh, target. Mm -hmm. So um, um, we, Danny uh, is uh, in charge on the security, which they built during the, the uh, Corona virus a system here in, the, in uh, the municipality to help to the old people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they are working also with the army, mm -hmm. uh, they, which gave us some kind of equipment uh, uh, to have the first aid in case. But mm -hmm. since we are such a small village and Sfat is much bigger in Kerat Shmona, the army, when it will be a war, there will be more uh, a, a more um, um, okay. more busy. They will be busier on those big villages, and we have to take care of ourselves. So yeah. uh, Danny built a, a, a department which will be able to help, but less uh, security still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Itai, maybe you could tell us uh, something about the um, what what is Hezbollah capable of? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, we know what they did to us and what uh, Nasrallah when he talking from his shelter because uh, from uh, the Lebanon tour war in uh, 2006, uh, and I've been there in uh, Lebanon in 2006. From there, he's sitting in his shelter and all the time talking about uh, how he doesn't need us in the world and we are the, the most problem of the world and uh, he want to uh, show us to the, uh, to the sea. Uh, and it's, uh, if I'm the charge of the security, I need to sleep in the, in the night. And he said that the next time, it's not was like the 2006 war, uh, we get uh, hundreds of hundreds of uh, missiles, mm. uh, and it's the it means that we will need to uh, to sleep to live in the shelters. And mm. the, the problem is we doesn't have a lot yeah. because uh, we are old villagers, and the the, the rule in Israel that uh, if you want to to build a, a new house from uh, one thousand and the the nineties. You must to to uh, to build a, a apartment sh shelter. It's something like a shelter, but it's not a, a big shelter. So uh, from uh, there, all the new all the new uh, depart uh, uh, pa uh, apartment uh, with shelter. But like I said, we are old ones. Uh, uh -huh. The villages very old. We have for uh, fourteen thousand uh, civilians. Here in uh, Zvulun area, we have only uh, 60 shelters. So it <laughs> means that uh, if uh, we need to put all the people, and if uh, our army said you need for a kid a uh, half meter for uh, one person, so you know what it means. It means uh -huh. that I don't know what to do with my civilians uh, in a war. We have a, a Kippat Barzel. I think uh, most of the people uh, uh, know this. And I it's very know. good. Mm -hmm. uh, they do a very good job, uh, but it's not enough. It's not mm -hmm. enough. And uh, think about a mother with uh, two or three kids in the middle of the night, uh, need to run in one minute to a shelter that, that she doesn't have. Mm -hmm. So uh, we pray. <laughs> we pray and uh, we very uh, appreciate uh, our uh, friends that uh, give us uh, uh, some uh, uh, shelters. We very appreciate it. And uh, of course, uh, we need more, but uh, uh, we have a problem. Yes, we have a problem because uh, our neighbor doesn't want uh, a peace, not the Hezbollah uh, from the north. 
So you agree, uh, both uh, Danny and Itai, you would agree with the state comptroller's report, which says that 30% of Israelis do not have functioning bomb shelters near their homes. And that includes the 250,000 residents that live in the northern border and the southern border. And that that's the highest area of threat right now in Israel. You would agree with that? I agree. I think it's more than 30. I think more it's even. a same like a 45. If and I put my my hand on a, my heart because mm. uh, if if the in the in the uh, in the south they saw the missiles uh, for a one week. It was 300 missiles or mm -hmm. uh, sorry 1,000. Here they said we have. Uh, 15,000 missiles for, for the North. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have, uh, uh, and we are in problem. I, yes, we are in problem. Mm -hmm. I, just wanna, I just wanna jump in on that for a moment, if I may. Hi, Itai. Um, so when you're talking about the, 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 the higher number of rocket potential in the North, is there a number? Is there a, is there a number that is, uh, is expected uh, that is in the arsenal of uh, Hezbollah? How many how many they have that you know of that you can talk we about? Have, uh, <laughs> we know, and the army know. I don't know the the, the number uh, for its fifteen thousand on twenty thousand. I know uh, to tell you that in the next war, the army said to us. Uh, that we doesn't have alarm. Why we doesn't have alarm? Because the missiles will be something like all one or two minutes we get a missile. So we doesn't have a alarm. Uh, so it's a thousand of thousand uh, of rockets and missiles and. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's so it sounds like the the arsenal that that uh, that Hezbollah has, based on the numbers you've just uh, expressed, could be. Uh, above uh, 200,000. Also, I'm not in a, I'm not a count, the, the, <laughs> the rockets yeah, and yeah, the yeah. missiles. But if you see what's, a, what's a, a, the happened in the Milchemet, the, the Lebanon war too, and the, all the time what's a, the uh, Air Force of Israel uh, attack, in Lebanon or sorry about missiles and how they, they friend in Iran, uh, give them all the time more and more rockets. So uh, yes, it's a lot. It's, it's I don't know it's a, if it's a, a 30 or 50,000 or a 200 or maybe 500,000, yeah? Uh -huh. I do. By the way, one last thing, sorry for interrupting here, but did you, Itai, did you talk about the makeup, the demographics of uh, Zvulun, who are the, who are the citizens of uh, of Zvulun, uh, that uh, you talked about. It's primarily agriculture, farmers, but but the, the different uh, cultures that make up your region. Yeah, the uh, we are very special for the uh, the good reasons in our uh, uh, community because in our community we have. Uh, Jewish uh, villages, uh, Arab or uh, Bedouin uh, village because it's Muslims, and we have uh, uh, also a uh, uh, religion, very religion, uh, Jewish uh, in our community, and we have a lot of uh, a lot of kids. I think if if I said we have in in uh, the Zvulun uh, area, we have uh, like I said, we have fourteen. Uh, Villages, uh, three of them. It's a Muslims. Uh, it's five uh, kibbutzim. It's very uh, special uh, village. I think only in Israel and maybe some kibbutz in uh, China. I think, <laughs> if, I, if I remember right, uh, it's a social uh, a community that uh, everybody work for everybody. Uh, but it's something that's gone, like the socialist from the world. Everybody uh, won't get more, so it's uh, different. But we have, we have still. I, I myself, 
live in a, a social kibbutz and uh, in the community, very hard community. But what is nice in our community that like uh, uh, Danny, my, my colleague said, in the corona, uh, we get a lot of, uh, high, of uh, help from the army, but our community was very strong with uh, uh, all community in all village, help to the other uh, community. It's not matter if the Arabs, Muslim, Jewish, uh, also a uh, Christian. We have Christian also in the one uh, part of our uh, villages. Uh, yeah, we are uh, very special because uh, we have a lot from a lot. <laughs> also, one word. Also, in our garden, the Jewish garden, <clears throat> kindergarten. Sorry, we have teachers. They are Muslims, <laughs> and they learn the Jewish kids about the holidays of the Jewish. So it's, uh, it, it's very nice. Wow. wow. Yeah. Like, you, yeah. like you say, Itai, the, the weapons and the, the, the rockets that come across the border, they will not make a difference between uh, which community they'll pick the high risk areas, whether that's near Haifa or near the Air Forces near Rosh Pina, but they will hit anyone who's in that area. It's so, everyone. Also, in uh, 2006, we get your missiles uh, near the, the Arab village. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I'm charged also the Muslim, not only the Jewish. Yeah. In uh, our villages, and uh, like I said before, uh, we appreciate uh, your presence in the, in the shelters. And we get it uh, also, uh, we put near the, uh, I don't remember the, how to say this, God. Mm -hmm. uh, we put in there the also mosque. Uh, in the, the mosque. mosque. Bosk also a shelter that you uh, give us, and uh, but also it's not enough because the, mm -hmm. it's very. I don't know if people know, but it's very uh, expensive to build a shelter for a twenty for a twenty people to uh, get a shelter is something like uh, twenty twenty thousand dollars, I think something like this for for one. So uh, if we have uh, fourteen thousand people. And we also, uh, only 50% uh, of them, they have shelters. I don't know uh, what can, we can do without uh, our friends in the world. Yeah. Depends on the size of the shelter, the cost, and there's different sizes. But definitely, it's a very expensive, expensive enterprise. Maybe I could also go back to Danny and Nurit and ask a question about the Rosh Pina community and your resilience. We put the shelters in for peace of mind, for a place to go for shelter. But what are you doing in uh, Rosh Pina for helping your community? Um, you're sitting in the bullseye. <laughs> A day to day, you know that there are thousands and thousands of rockets pointed at your community. Maybe you could share how does this affect your population? Uh, <laughs> מנסים להתקרב למקלטים ככל שניתן, mm -hmm. ויודעים את ההנחיות איך להגיע לכל מקלט ומקלט. Uh, you know, first of all, we are very close community. So mm -hmm. sometimes families are, when it's a war, they are combining to themselves together to those that have the shelter in the house. But, uh, uh, you know, we get some kind of alarm that it's go going to be some kind of war of a um, war or, or, or any attack. And um, so people are uh, getting ready to that and they are getting close to the shelter. We have some, how many is it? 31 uh, uh, public uh, uh, shelters, which is underground. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and ca it's can capacity of Kama, 50 ish between 40 to 50 people can go in. So they can plan themselves and get, get near to that. Uh, but uh, as we are about to uh, know that the, the war can be longer this time, not like uh, la last time the, the Lebanon war was one and a half months. It's not like in the Gaza Strip. 
mm. and one and a half months to be in a shelter all day long from mm. the morning till the if you have your own or you have two or three families together this is a normal but but when you are, have to to sit down so many hours and so many many days in a small uh, uh, a place 50 people is a bit difficult and this is why when I had the chance to ask for Shmuel uh, to place uh, two of the shelters in Rosh Pina, I used it. And then we got another two with your kindness. It's really your kindness. And uh, uh, we appreciate every second that we have it. And when we will have the chance to get more, we will, we will dedicate it to the neighborhoods that doesn't have uh, those shelters. This is our main priority to mm -hmm. get every everyone will go to one of the neighbors that doesn't have a, a shelter. Mm -hmm. Can I jump in for a second and just ask um, Danny and Narit, can you speak a, for a, a minute on a trauma, a trauma dealing with trauma, Hossein, and what uh, what what's going on in Rosh Pina with uh, we, uh, Danny just told me uh, yesterday that they, during the, the beginning of the uh, coronavirus, they built a department which are uh, phoning to the old people every day to ask what they need to be able to uh, supply them, to be able to help them if they need a medicine, if they need uh, to take them to the doctor or to bring the doctor to them, uh, they done it. We have psychologic uh, person that are, are taking care of uh, of uh, talking with those people. The psychologists, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this way, like there, there could be, like, it sounds like there could be a lot of trauma if you're in that situation where you're under attack and you have to be in a shelter for a long period of time. Yeah. This is this uh, department will uh, function again when uh, when war will be. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, we know, uh, 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 Danny knows the people who is in charge, and they we we uh, uh, divided the the village to areas. Each one have his own area. He knows who is the people are in charge on. We work on it, but this this will not be enough. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, either Itai or Danny could mention the connection of Iran to this situation. Either one of you who wants to make a comment. I know for many of our people, they may not immediately make the connection like we might living here in Israel, um, that Hezbollah uh, in the north and Hamas in the south are funded or weapons are coming in from Iran. And Iran is a hot topic right now, especially in uh, the conversation because of possibility of returning to these agreements regarding their nuclear uh, weapons. And so perhaps um, either one of you or both of you would have some comment about that. I can, I can start if you want. Uh, I think we need to, un to understand or to know that Hezbollah, it's not a country, it's not a, a they, they doesn't have a, a, a place to live and this the country and the border. The border is Lebanon. Mm -hmm. Lebanon, it's a, a, a country with a government and everything. And Hezbollah and Hamas in the, in the south, the uh, very extreme uh, religion uh, Muslims. And uh, they doesn't have money because they doesn't have factories and, uh, and uh, all to get the money. The money get, from Iran. Iran, she is a country. She is a, a very big country with a, a lot of uh, oil. From there, they get the money. And the money, uh, they doesn't give the money for the uh, civilians. They are very poor. They give the money to buy a missiles, to buy a factory of in, or missiles or rocket in Damascus or in south of Lebanon or in Gaza also. They doesn't have, and they, we saw it in in the in the uh, war. You get and you see, and also uh, you hear in the radio 
you hear, uh, I don't remember how you said it, it's Iranian uh, speaker, it's, uh, it's not Arabic. Uh, language. The language, the language is, is uh, it's called uh, Paras, Parsi or uh, Parsi. Mm -hmm. Parsi. It's not uh, Arabic. Mm -hmm. And uh, also the, the, the civilians of Iran, they are poor guy with, that, with not the money to, to help their kids, why? Because the money go to Hezbollah to kill us, uh, the big, the, the small evil, like the big evil in, in uh, United States. Mm -hmm. So uh, because I uh, know when I was in the army 30 years ago, uh, and I, uh, I was in Lebanon in my uh, shirut, uh, I, I speak, I speak with, with Lebanon uh, citizens. Hmm. It doesn't hit us. They want to live also with the peace. They're very uh, similar to us. Very, mm -hmm. they agree to culture. They want. They have kids. The Arabic and the and the Jewish and the Hebrew. It's it's a sister uh, languages, but not the Farsi. And they give them a lot of money and the very uh, special uh, uh, commanders that they uh, learn them how to fight the Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the connect. So you feel that threat uh, uh, all the time because it's it's uh, tunnels underneath homes in southern Lebanon that are filled with rockets that are aimed your direction, and it's being fed by Iran. And uh, it, what what's the, the the I I I said funny, but it's not funny because near Zvolun under the ground we have a pipe that's. Before the uh, the revolution in Iran, it was a, a fuel pipe, oil pipe, from a lot from a, a south of Israel. That's the uh, the ships from Iran give their the, the oil and the fuel from Iran to Europe uh, in pipe in Israel. And now we get also in these ships. They go around the world or in a very special, uh, 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 the, the Air Force uh, of, of uh, Iran and they get the rockets. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a different place, different days. We can live uh, in peace, but we, we're afraid, we're afraid. I think we are also the, the only, only place in the world that's the, in the First week in the start of uh, uh, the year of the learning year, every kid need to see where is a shelter near to his class. It's mm. crazy. Mm. Yeah. So um, Danny and Nurit, and could you maybe mention in light of this Iran threat, what besides, is there something else that you're preparing uh, besides the shelters, or is the shelters your main thing that you are preparing now, in the event of an attack from from the north, or is it primarily the shelters? And uh... right now, uh, the uh, the main issue is really the shelter because okay. if we are talking about the war, okay, because. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, our neighbor as well, like uh, it I have, uh, we have uh, the neighbor, uh, uh, we have the neighbor, uh, uh, the, the Bedouin neighbor in the village, which called uh, Tuba Zangaria, which you know. Mm -hmm. um, so we have another point of view and we are trying to, uh, uh, to connect, to combine, to, co to combine them with us as a, but, but uh, I think that uh, the, uh, I'm talking from my uh, point of view because I didn't ask uh, Danny about it, mm -hmm. but, but uh, uh, I think that uh, there is also a threat from the inside uh, uh, as Muslim while there is a war. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember, probably, I don't know if our uh, viewers uh, know that during the Lebanon war, we had uh, Arabs which target our places to the Hezbollah and inform them where to shoot the missiles. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have uh, 
but we have what to work on, but the shelter, first of all, will cover on us. Mm -hmm. So this is how I see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I see that time is uh, moving on and uh, I know that Itai especially has a very, very critical meeting he needs to be at. Our security chiefs are some of the busiest people in the country, I think. <laughs> and we're incredibly honored that you would be with us today. Is there any final word, Itai, before you need to sign off that you wanna say to Christian friends around the world? And then we'll continue on a little more, but I wanna make sure we don't keep you longer than necessary. Uh, yes. First, I want to say that thank you. Uh, very enjoyed to be with you and to show you uh, our problems and uh, very appreciate uh, the shelters that you give us and uh, that's the people in the world and the, the Christian world see that the people in Israel uh, in the Holy Land uh, mm -hmm. want a peace. We want mm -hmm. to live in peace. We want our kids go to a school without to, to think if mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, what they hear, it was a bomb or a, or a backfire of car. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I pray like, like you that uh, we have a peace uh, uh, in the, I don't know when, but maybe one day. And uh, mm -hmm. everybody that want to come to Israel, we we get you in in a, a hug, and uh, mm -hmm. you need to come to see uh, our agriculture and our very nice uh, Holy Land. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Zitai. Thank you for being with us. I like I said, we'll continue on a little bit here, but I wanted to make sure we're going to show the video just shortly of these Valoon Regional Council. And, um, and the shelters that were delivered there in just a moment, but let's uh, go ahead and, and uh, allow Itai to say goodbye and uh, continue on to this very, very urgent other meeting that he has. Thank you, Itai. Thank you Thank very you, much Itai. and have a nice uh, weekend in Israel. We start the weekend tomorrow, so uh, <laughs> have a nice weekend. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Itai. Shabbat okay. shalom. Shabbat shalom. I have another question that's come from a, a viewer um, that uh, maybe uh, Danny could answer for us. And the, the question is, does the other side know of Israel's vulnerabilities? Um, uh, is there, Nurit and, and Danny, would you be able to uh, answer something <laughs> along this? <laughs> Danny say that uh, uh, as uh, as we uh, know that uh, and we hear him um, uh, Nasrallah on the uh, on the TV all the time uh, that uh, he is is quite arrogant as you know and he is sure of himself that uh, at the moment he will feel like he will attack. And, and he knows our vulnerability and he knows that uh, we are not covered all, all around. Uh, this is why he started on uh, 2006 and uh, he, he will do, but I think that on the other side, he's, in, he's afraid for himself. He's afraid, uh, so he will not try us, mm -hmm. but uh, um, I don't want to, to sound, we don't want to sound as vulnerable. We want to sound to, 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 to our friend to understand uh, because it's so expensive to build shelters and to uh, get shelter, we have less because money is one of the issues in, the, in, the, in Israel and uh, we are trying to uh, to uh, uh, our, the army and the authorities know our situation in the area. 
and how, uh, how we are missing uh, shelter. But it's a, first of all, they want to help to uh, the villages which are on the borders, both sides. When mm. they will finish, can take 50 years, mm. they will come to uh, help to the middle side, which are, we are in the middle side. Even we are only 11 kilometers from the, uh, from the uh, uh, border, but still we are not on the border. And those vi uh, uh, kibbutz and villages which are on the borders, some of them doesn't have a protection properly, not enough. You can see it on the Gaza. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, the, the missiles that uh, the Hezbollah has, they are uh, able to fly furthermore. And you saw what happened with the Gaza, which uh, uh, buildings was uh, attacked in Tel Aviv and in, in uh, Rishon and in, uh, in Rehovot and uh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. to, uh, to, uh, to protect the whole country is quite difficult. Yeah. So they are switching the, the, the um, uh, uh, Kipat Barzel. Um, Iron Dome. Uh, how? Iron Dome. Iron Dome. They move it uh, every time that uh, there is a more hot in one spot from the north to the south. Mm -hmm. Everything is cost money. Everything which are uh, in, uh, connected to this kind of uh, living in the middle of the, the Arab uh, world is uh, difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, the IDF continues to develop responses, and so does the other side. And yeah. uh, this is the this is the ongoing big challenge. That you yeah, face. exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and just, you uh, know uh, the, the the problem is that the old people have a, have a problem to arrive to the shelter. This is our problem. I don't know what is going on with the Itai area. But our problem is 200 how, uh, families that, that are not families, they are couples usually, okay? They, 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 they are not able to run out from their house to arrive into the public shelter. It's too far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Danny, could you, could you share, Danny or Nuri, could you share just for a minute, uh, maybe a personal um, testimony, a personal story? From that had to do with either being under attack or resilience. I'll 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 tell us my story. Probably you heard it. Um, I was living in the hills uh, during the the uh, second uh, Lebanon war, and I had a small, uh, maybe uh, one one point two meter uh, bright uh, shelter in the house. But I had a dog and I had a seven years old girl at that time, okay? And I had to take the, the dog outside to have his uh, business. And, and when I was going, every time I used to go with him outside, uh, the siren was starting. So I had to take my seven years old daughter, my dog and run into the shelter. I tell you, I have a, I had a shelter in the house. I was living one and a half months in this shelter on the floor with my daughter. I had a, my computer inside, luckily because she could see some some kind of uh, treatment in the in the TV. That's all. Huh. Wow. So uh, it's a quite difficult uh, life for for people, all people. Huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Very, very challenging for Israel and for the security chiefs and for the government officials and, and social welfare workers and the trauma and the treatment uh, that comes as a result in the aftermath of events like this. Yeah, uh, in, sure. the, in, the, in the South, for example, today already they warned that they, it can get, become a, a heat hot in the South. And mm -hmm. those people that living there, they are already aware all the time. 
we are like in a quiet and in one day it can start. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and, and uh, very heavily it can start. It's not like in the in a, a, in a Gaza Strip that they are putting the bombs in between the houses. It's not like that. In one second, they take it out all together and then they shoot. Yeah. And there's heavier weapons uh, along the northern border. I think yeah. they have more capability. It's the largest yeah. state, non-state actor, the largest arsenal in the yeah. world for a terrorist organization, so. Yeah. Okay. It's quite that we are not facing facing face to face with the Iranian, but we know that they are here. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing that. We are coming close to the end of the webinar. Shmuel Bowman, we've put on a lot of shelters over the years. We've heard from the security chiefs here that you know this is one of the biggest needs they have for their community whether they're older people and they can't get to a shelter quickly so they need something closer to home we uh, focus on putting our shelters in public locations where there's going to be a lot of people maybe you could mention just a few words about the how the shelters what they do how they're made and then i want to show uh, the placement of these shelters so our friends around the world can see that before we close today thanks nicole we always confer with the community leadership about what kind of shelters are needed and where they're needed. These decisions at that level only happen in consultation with the people on the ground. This is something very, very special. I think rather unique that uh, decisions aren't made in some boardroom uh, many you know, distance away. We engage with the local leadership, find out what they need. And as a result, we're able to provide a different menu of different shelter um, projects, everything from small, smaller bell shelters for smaller groups, for example, for a kindergarten, all the way to renovating and refurbishing large, huge shelters for hundreds of people and everything in between. Uh, the above ground shelters are designed to be accessible. Some 50% of Israelis cannot go down a flight of stairs. So all of our, those type of shelters are accessible. Um, and a lot of them are painted in nice murals and colors, but the most important thing is they're solid, heavy shelters, weighing everything between 10 metric tons, which is 22 and a half thousand pounds, and up to 40, 40 tons, which is 90,000 pounds. These are very heavy. This is what you need to save your life. And that's what we've been doing for the last many years. Concrete results, real tangible. You know what they are? They're big, huge, heavy hugs. <laughs> Absolutely. That's fantastic. Um, is there anything you'd like to comment, uh, you or Nirit, about the Christian Jewish connection here? Because I think, uh, like you, you mentioned the hug, we've heard that before. What does it mean? Um, uh, ooh, I was uh, so honored to meet uh, first of all, I met uh, uh, Shmuel many, many years ago, and then I met to, to him, I met you, and um, I feel honored. I feel, I, I met groups from your, uh, from the uh, organization, to, from your uh, organization. I made them uh, a nice tour all around the uh, Hoshpina. It was something that I will take with me uh, for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. To know that we have uh, people that really think about us. And I saw there are people that uh, I would not mention, ma imagine that they will be able to uh, donate in order to buy for us uh, uh, one shelter. It, it was a... Uh, uh, I cannot uh, express it. It's, it's uh, difficult to express it because it's from, from the heart. Mm -hmm. It's really on, uh, 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 something uh, that uh, as a person, I would like to have contact with each one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and in a way, thank you. Yeah, no, Narita is, is very, very correct. And I, I share her heart on this. And that is, is that you know, we're in a historic moment. This is a historic moment. Here I am, you know, Orthodox Jewish rabbi, and we have other 
uh, you know, other Jewish people from different uh, different parts of the Jewish community, and we're we're you know we're we're coming together with with our Christian friends. Yeah. This is this is historical. This is something. Yeah. This is a window of opportunity you don't want to miss. And uh, and it's uh, it's an incredible thing because there's that dedication plaque. And there's that dedication plaque that is you know that's up on the shelter and people look at it and then they look at it again they go wow there are, i didn't expect this and it's that expectation that then turns into appreciation that turns into friendship it's it's just a it's a it's a it's a miracle it's wonderful i'm speaking about uh, the, the christian loves israel so many times on in israel I'm, I'm going together with uh, groups uh, from Rosh Pinat for trips, and I'm speaking about them because this is so special to have such a friends like that. It's, it's not something, it's, it's not uh, obvious. Right, right, that's for sure. Yes, well, thanks. Well, we, thanks, we are, yeah, <laughs> we are thrilled to represent Christians, many, many, many Christians around the world many of them who are listening to this webinar now and others who will listen to it later, who really are interested and wanna hear what is going on with you and they pray for you, they donate um, much needed, not just the shelters, but other kinds of equipment. And we're gonna now go to a video and you're gonna to get to see for yourselves one of those deliveries. And before we do that, I just wanna say a huge thank you to Nurit and Danny and Shmuel for being with us today and really appreciate your input and your friendship. And we look forward to uh, seeing you many more times and helping we much more so. in the future. Well, we really hope so. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so we'll put that video on now and then we will close the webinar. Thank you. One of the ways the ICJ is able to show support for the people of Israel is by providing bomb shelters for communities at risk of attack. Although we often hear about the southern region and the ongoing attacks that come out of Gaza, the people in the north are also under threat from Hezbollah and others. Today, we're in the northern region of Zvulun, and we're here to provide shelters for the communities here. We're gonna have the opportunity to talk to the residents and hear from them how important this is for them. Come, follow me. My name is Itai Carmon. I am the security officer or charge of the safety and the emergency of the Zvulun Regional Council. We live in a very high risk area near the port of Haifa. We have a lot of chemical factories and the gasoline factories. And because of this, our neighbors from the north, from Lebanon, want to, uh, to attack this area. And we need to put the shelters for the, all the kindergartens and all the villages. We have three kindergartens. They, they don't have shelters and uh, we want to protect them. If we have a tech here, they can run to the shelter very, very uh, fast. I'm Shmuel Bowman, Executive Director of Operation Life Shield. Well, first of all, we've placed these shelters beside the most important place, and that's beside the kindergartens. What could be more important than taking care and protecting the lives of the children and the amazing staff that take care of them? And so first of all, this brings security and peace of mind on a day-to-day -day basis. These shelters are so important for us, especially in our mixed community where Jews and Muslims Arabs and Bedouins are living together. We are really grateful to you for that. We are really grateful to you. We are really grateful to you. We are really grateful to you. You are just coming and coming to save our lives, to save our children. We are really grateful to you. We are really grateful to you. 
This is a wonderful example of how people from all diversities are able to come together and live together, and everybody deserves to live. Everybody deserves that peace and security. There's much more we need to be doing here. The partnership with the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem and Operation Life Shield goes back a decade and a half. And that relationship is rock solid. We're so grateful for that incredible friendship that we have had, that we continue to have, and that we will have into the future. This is a bond and a relationship without absolutely any uh, conditions whatsoever on anything, and we absolutely appreciate that. This is true friendship. We very appreciate it. All the Christians in the world that can give us the shelters for the kids and for all the people here in the Holy Land, in North Holy Land, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, ICEJ. Thank you, Christians all over the world for helping us. You can see how important these shelters are for at-risk communities. And it's because of your support that we're able to give peace of mind and save lives in Jewish, Bedouin, and other communities who are under risk of attack. And if you haven't yet had the opportunity to partner with us, I'd like to invite you to go to icej.org crisis. And thank you so much for your generous giving.